And I felt like there was this idealistic way of, I wanted to do well financially and do good, you know, to the world at the same time. I wanted to do well financially and do good, you know, to the world at the same time. And the struggle I've had over the last five years is just how bloody hard that is. You know, and you see those companies, like you've said, where they do financially really, really well, but the goodness just seems to get lost on the side. And then you get those of us who are trying to do both at the same time. And it can be quite hard not to become disillusioned and go, well, actually, perhaps I need to go get a corporate job because I do have to pay rent and there's this economic system that I need to be a part of that isn't going to take all my social impact ideals as, you know, currency in my bank account. And that balance has just been really hard to renegotiate on a daily basis as I'm confronted with creating my own income. And it's only now this year that I've earned the most that I've ever earned and I've finally got an income that I'm actually proud of. But it's been five years of really hard work trying to do well and do go good simultaneously. You know, it, it's the, the, the money system itself is problematic you know so it's 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 tricky unless you're going to then move and i'm sure you've got certain idealists in the community who say well let's stay away from currency altogether we'll only use you know some kind of blockchain based or organic blockchain and spiral money uh and and not even enter the currency system but you know you know good luck with that is the because we well, I, you still have to pay rent exactly and um you know like what what is money a substitute for why is it that money or, or a note only exists when there's when we're in relationship? You know, how do we bring more consciousness to it? A five dollar bill in my pocket means nothing until I come into a relationship with someone else. It means nothing until I come into a relationship with someone else. Yeah, and I read a little of that uh, that uh, denial of death. Also, there's a lot of. Uh... A lot of arguments about money as a, uh, a kind of a totem for, for immortality. But oh, well, of course, it doesn't work. It's beautiful, though. As soon as you start saying that you're interested in money, everyone seems to have, you know, a book or a podcast or a question. And I guess my <laughs> core hope with holding it more in awareness is we just need to bring more consciousness to money. We're kind of asleep to it. And one of the things that we've done really well with Inspiral, and I think Ilana woke up to this right in the early days, is how the decisions that you make about money in your organization are like a temperature check or a manifestation of how power and decisions flow through it. You know, money can be like the blood in an organization, and if it's all stuck in one corner of the body, it's not going to be healthy. You know, if only the CFO makes the decisions about the money, then the person that's doing the design work on the other side of the floor doesn't feel empowered or isn't involved in it. So I'm really curious how both we can come up with apps like CoBudget, but how we can also come up with better social processes to bring more consciousness and more awareness of what my relationship to it is. You know, why do we have this like, no one talks about how much they earn. I'm like, well, I'm starting to get interested of having that public conversation and no one talks about how hard it is to pay rent. Well, what would it bring to put that to the forefront? Right, I mean, there's shame on both sides of the money equation. If you don't make enough, you're ashamed for your peers that you're poor. If you start making a lot, then you're ashamed for your peers that you look, you're look you making too much money now. So it's a, it's, it's a, socially, uh, a socially enforced silence and uh, you know, obfuscation of, of the way money moves that if we started to see it, you know, it becomes so simple and so logical. Wow. You know, it becomes so simple and so logical. Wow. Money, the way money works now, it was designed to spread the way it is. It was it was designed not to distribute. It was designed to be extracted by capitalists and for workers not to be able to accumulate any. You know, when you see that, then all of a sudden the way people are working with money, it, it starts to look less like their fault yep. and more like the, the bias of the tool itself. Exactly, and I think that's where many of the challenges that we're looking ahead of us are design challenges. You know, if I look perhaps at those three core infrastructures that many of us take a part in, that would be the organizational infrastructure, the financial infrastructure, and the political infrastructure, we need to take a step back and redesign them from the bottom up. Because I don't think 
the complexity of the problems that the world's facing needs this one hammer solution. And I think now where I want to put my attention is understanding more of those financial infrastructure situations and those political infrastructure situations. And I don't know enough. I'm, I'm not an expert in that space, but I guess I just care so deeply about how these structures are just not giving a lot of people a good time in the world right now. And we've got to stop being insane as per Einstein's definition. Ultimately, the, the path to that to reacquaint ourselves with our humanity and, and that of other people, you know, which is obviously it's the point of this whole thing to, for, to, to get people thinking of themselves as on team human rather than on team money or team machine or team corporation or whatever uh, uh, sort of artificial abstracted construct they've come up with to, to worship in their lives rather than just to you know, engage mindfully and lovingly with the other humans yeah. around. And I think that's where it's really interesting when you start talking about, I guess, answering your question before around, you know, what if we were successful or what if we got big? Like, I always have this funny thing when people talk about IP or I have this idea and I don't want anyone to know about it. Like, I have so many ideas that I want people to know about because my perspective is that they're all positive ideas and you know, I'm still suffering with the consequences of a couple of other ideas and let's try and spread the new ideas. Let's open the world. Let's try and spread the new ideas. Let's open the world. And it's why we ran the Open Source Open Society Conference because open is fundamentally better for the world, from my opinion. You know, we've got to stop getting protective. We've got to stop getting patch protective about the work that we're doing. And that's again what we're trying to do with Inspiral. I'm like, here, take it, fork it, return it back in a better form and let's keep on learning from how the open source software community has redesigned software systems and apply that then to our organizational systems and our financial systems and our political systems because I don't have all the answers, you don't have all the answers. But hopefully, and this is where I love the work that you're doing, you know, Team Human has the answers. 